Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Robin Goza, and Robin is president and CEO of Moxie, the Wolf Museum for Exploration and Innovation. Welcome, Robin. Well, thank you, Cinder. Thanks so much for having me and, and having me back again. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, you know, every time I drive by the Moxie or walk by the Moxie, mm -hmm. it makes me smile because it's such a fun, uplifting, wonderful place for everybody. It is. Kids, yes, but grown-ups too. Oh, absolutely. Well, the building, the building itself is so beautiful, right? Yes, it is. So, you know, it was originally designed by Barry Burkus before he passed, oh, and yes. his vision was to have a sandcastle on State Street. Oh, God. So next time you walk by, take a closer look at it, and you'll see like the big tower in front, uh -huh. and it has kind of that sandstone look at the bottom of yeah. it, and then the tower is almost like symbolic of a sandcastle. So it's really, it's a playful, whimsical yes. approach yes. to the Santa Barbara architecture that I think fits in beautifully. Yeah, playful, whimsical describes what you do inside as well as the outside look. So that's good to know. Yes, yeah. I mean, we definitely kind of carry that that playfulness throughout all of our exhibits yes. and our programs. That's a really important part of the learning process because we want the learning to be joyful. Yes, and yes, that's a good word. Yeah, and, and you know, so much of what we do, our educational philosophy is rooted in play-based learning. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 20 years ago, even 30 years ago, people would say play. Like, play is just play. Yeah. Kids are playing around in the mud, or kids yeah, yeah. are playing around <laughs> in the dirt, and that does, you know, sure, that's fun, but they're not really learning anything. Well, the research shows that play is how children learn. Yes. And so that's what we are doing, you know, through STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. All of those experiences in Moxie are STEAM based, and then they're also play based, so that. Um, you know, you're building a race car to race it down the track at Build It, Test It, Race It, and you're having a fun experience. Yeah. It's, it's really fun to race a car, and to your point, adults enjoy it too, yes, and yes, get yes. very competitive with each other, and through all of that experience, they're learning how to test, how to iterate on their design, mm. how to move forward and persevere through failure if their design doesn't win or go as fast as they wanted it to. And then they're also learning about momentum and velocity and all of these other things without having those labels, without having that vocabulary kind of like shoved yeah. in front of them. It's all through that experience of, again, the joyful, yeah. playful, whimsical learning. That is a great example. And I've noticed your staff is also playful and whimsical and yes, joyful. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the staff in Moxie is stellar. I mean, that's I could go on with so many accolades about the team, but really everybody is there because they believe in our mission. Mm -hmm. um, they want kids and families to have fun, to enjoy and appreciate science, to understand where they are in the world and how the world works and to just really build and foster an inclusive environment so that all families in Santa Barbara and along the Central Coast feel welcome and feel like they belong at Moxie. Okay, so I have a question for you. Yes. So a friend of mine recently said, um, I'm gonna, my um, toddler uh, grandchild is mm -hmm. gonna be visiting. Um, where should I take her? And I thought of Moxie and I thought, toddler, hmm, I wonder if that's appropriate. So tell me what, what, what should I say to this friend? You should say absolutely yes. Oh. Um, yeah, so our kind of our target age range at Moxie is ages three to 11, um, but, but even that zero to three age range can get so much from an experience at Moxie. Um, we, we have some programs in some areas that are specially designed for toddlers. We've really been focusing on early learners, as they're called. Oh, okay. um, and so right now we have an area called Moxie Tots, and oh, I know it's, it's such a cute how name. How cute is that? Um, and so it's this fantastic area on the second floor of the museum, for okay. those of you who've been there a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's an area where uh, kids can kind of get their wiggles out. It's gross motor skills. Oh. So it's climbing and balancing and building for that kind of toddler age. Um, and all of that, you may say, well, what does that really have to do with science? Well, you're balancing, uh -huh. which is an important scientific skill. You're also testing out your limits in terms of like your comfort with risk taking. Uh -huh. And even though for the toddler who's climbing, the risk is about like physical risk, that actually helps create a mindset so that as they get older oh. and once they're in school, 
and once they're facing more like science-based problems, then they're, they feel more confident taking a risk yes. with science or engineering. Oh, that's so good. So it's it's really, it's great to see. So, I mean, all these little toddlers are enjoying this kind of gross motor climbing area. And then right next to it, we've got what we call big blue blocks. Mm. And they are big. So it's these big foam blocks that fit together, kind of like a glorified Lincoln Logs, if you will. Oh, yeah. And so you can build to your heart's content. And they're lightweight since they're foam, oh. so toddlers can lift them. But that's an area where older kids can get in the game, too. Yeah. And so we kind of, we call it our construction zone, um, because you can build <laughs> these things. And speaking of stories, because I know you love stories. Yes. Um, so there was a family in there the other day. And, and the room, as I said, it all that's in there are these big blue blocks so that you can just build anything that you can imagine. And there was a, there was a dad kind of sitting on the side. Mm -hmm. And all these kids were in the middle of the room building. And you see them and they're stacking arches and they're stacking these blocks. And I mean, these structures get to be like four feet, five feet tall. Oh gosh. And so they've kind of built this, this structure and finally they say, okay, daddy, the fort is ready. We're ready for you to attack. <laughs> and so he does. And so like the dad rushes in and it's just this whole like fun, oh, really just happy time for them to all be playing and building. And you know, the kids are like, hold on, we have to fortify the walls. And so like, again, they're doing oh my engineering, gosh. they're doing building. Yes. yes, so much imagination. So that was a really fun, really fun sight to see. Imagination and exploration. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Gee, that's a great story. I can just see it. I can see it. So yeah. whole families. This best for whole families. Absolutely. Because there's something for every age. Mm -hmm. There is. A another place that's really popular with families, and toddlers are certainly welcome in the space, but this is where I see more of like kind of the, the elementary and early middle school age mm -hmm. is in our innovation workshop. Ah. So that's the maker space that's mm -hmm. on the first floor. And a maker space is an area where we've got materials to build anything that you can imagine. So we've got, uh, we actually partner with Art From Scrap, oh. and so we get a lot of materials from them. And the materials, just like they are in the store at Art From Scrap, are always changing. Mm. So, you know, it, we don't have it so set out that it's, you know, corks are here and beads are here and pipe cleaners uh -huh, are here. Uh -huh. It may be those three materials today. Mm -hmm. You come back next week and maybe we're all out of beads. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have popsicle sticks oh, or now we have, you know, whatever yeah, it may yeah, be. Yeah. So really it's not so much about having kind of a, a set, you know, of materials per se, but it's about what could you build? And if some of your constraints are the materials that you have in front of you, well then how can you be creative and build something with that? And so we'll have prompts in the workshop to kind of help mm -hmm. get kids started on a project. Yes, yes. So the prompt might be, can you build something very tiny? It would be small enough for a gnome or a fairy, or it might be: Can you construct a bridge that's strong enough to hold, you know, a, a significant weight? All different kinds of things. But again, that's the prompt. And yes, if a family yes. comes in, and if that's not what they want to build, that's fine. We've got staff who are in that space to kind of facilitate and to encourage and to even, you know, say things like, "Oh, I see. It looks like maybe you're having a little bit of trouble getting those two things to stick together." And I see that you're using tape. Did you know we have a hot glue station over here? Oh gosh. And so then kind of like <laughs> orienting visitors to that space and so all of the tools are there. So it's also great for parents because the kids can make the mess in the mm -hmm. innovation workshop mm -hmm. and then they can go home and we'll clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I know for my own kids who are kind of in that target age range for Moxie, my kids love to build things at home. And sometimes I'm like, enough with the cardboard boxes and the toilet paper rolls, <laughs> like, ugh. But we can then take it to Moxie, yes, yes. you know, take that creativity and imagination there. They can build to their heart's content in the workshop and then I can walk away and we're just taking home kind of a finished project. I'm not taking home a giant cardboard box. <laughs> oh, God, right, oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, that is just fabulous. Yeah. And so um, I'm just going to call up my friend and say, yes, go to Moxie. You absolutely with should. With your toddler grandchild. Yes. Well, and we also have another program that we do on Tuesdays. And that one, we do call it Toddler Tuesdays. And that's been a fantastic time when we actually, we don't book school field trips on those days uh -huh. so that the museum can be dedicated to what we call our, our tiniest explorers, oh, um, that zero to three crowd. And we often partner with some local, um, some local groups in town too. We've partnered with the library oh. on some programming there. Uh -huh. um, 
and it, that's just been really fantastic. It, we bring out additional materials and activities and have staff who are really engaging with the families and also letting the caregivers and the adults know what their child is learning while they're there and going back to that learning through play. Yeah. Really just kind of explaining that for the for the parents and the adults who are there so that they recognize even my two year old is developing early math skills, uh -huh. early science skills, things that will help them as they build up that identity as a science learner that we, you know, want them to have and, and instill that joy of learning um, for a lifetime, hopefully. That is so great. And so Obviously, you collaborate with all kinds of uh, schools, and so t tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, so I mentioned we've uh, collaborated quite a bit with the <clears throat> library. Um, we also partner with uh, UCSB. Oh. Um, so we have researchers who come in to the museum and um, are kind of conducting uh, some, some research there. We also have had, um, uh, we've written curriculum with the university as well. Um, and we also do a lot of partnerships with the schools. So just, uh, you know, recently we were piloting an after-school program with Santa Barbara Unified and Goleta Union School okay. Districts, and where we could bring MOXIE to the schools. Oh. And so we, you know, kind of tied it to this engineering design kinds of concepts and, you know, really getting the kids, we focused on fifth and sixth graders, um, getting them excited about steam and excited about making and building and tinkering and then we wrapped up the six-week program with a visit to moxie oh gosh that's great yeah so tell me more about the ucsb you say research but how are they what are they research well we we've done a couple of things we've been fortunate to receive two grants from the national science foundation okay um, that have been in partnership with the university and so with those um, one of them we were researching how how teachers were feeling equipped and supported to teach engineering in their classrooms oh. um, because you know in, I think it was in 2014 when the Next Generation Science Standards came out mm -hmm. and engineering got added, and that's a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and so we were working with the university to not only write curriculum to support the teachers, um, to create a field trip program that was at MOXIE around engineering, but then just to find out kind of at the end of all of it, did the teachers feel, yeah, did they feel supported? Did they feel like they could teach engineering in an elementary yeah. school classroom in a successful way? And so far, we've got a really good response from that, which has been fantastic. That is great. Yeah, I would imagine if I was a teacher, and I've been a teacher a long time, and all of a sudden you told me I should be teaching engineering, I'd, I'd be a little nervous about that. Absolutely. Engineering seems like such a big concept. It does, it does. And I mean, it's great that it's in the school curriculum yes, now, yes. but that doesn't mean that everybody has already been trained on yeah. that. So, you know, we, we certainly ask a lot of our teachers, and when I say we, I mean like yes. society, right? Yes, yes. We ask so much of our teachers and um, we need to be sure that we're there to support them in yeah. doing the very important work that they do in the classrooms. Gosh, so exciting. Okay, so Moxie is a 501c3 nonprofit. Yes. And I know your website is on the screen. Mm -hmm. And so a person, for example, could go on your website, find out about your hours and what kinds of things you have mm -hmm. and how they might sign up for this, that, or the other thing. Yes. And while they're on there, I bet you have a Donate Now oh, button. Oh, Cinder, you know that we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, yeah, we've got opportunities to um, purchase a membership online. <clears throat> okay, membership, um, that's good. Um, but then also, there's an opportunity to just donate, to make uh -huh. a charitable contribution to the museum, which goes a long way to help with our accessibility initiatives. Um, you know, kind of going back to the collaboration that we do in the community, being accessible to our community is yes. such a priority for us and it really is thanks to the generosity of our community and and the fundraising that we do that helps us you know be able to uh, create like a museums for all program mm. where uh, families who are receiving food benefits would like the cal fresh card when they show that at the front desk at moxie they get in for one dollar admission oh golly. per person and that's actually, that's a program that... That's um, great. Yeah, it, it's a national program, and we're very fortunate that um, a lot of my peer museums here in Santa Barbara County, we all join the Museums for All program at the same time. Oh. Because we all know how important it is to be accessible. Um, but, you know, contributions also support our scholarship program. Oh. 
So we offer summer camps and spring oh, break camps. Oh, nice. And so the scholarships are available for, um, uh, you know, for children who, children and families who qualify. We also, um, as I've mentioned with schools, mm -hmm. we have a lot of schools who come on field trips and we are able to subsidize the cost that the schools pay, again, through the charitable contributions that we receive. That is from so donors. great. Yeah. And you also, don't you also have a couple of events, every fundraising events every we year? We do, we do. So uh, we host a spring brunch, uh -huh. um, usually in May every year, and that's an opportunity to really learn more about Moxie. So that one is a little bit more of like a dip your toe in the water and, uh -huh. and, and learn more about the museum. And then in the fall, we have our gala, which is on the rooftop of Moxie. Oh gosh. Yeah, and so it's absolutely beautiful. It's dinner under the stars. Uh, we bring in some fantastic guest speakers and entertainment, and that's really our big sort of signature event uh, when we raise quite a bit of the funds needed to support all of the museum operations for the year. That is wonderful. Yeah. Gee whiz, I'm going to have to put those on my calendar. I'm going to go yes. on your website and find out the date, and Absolutely. I'm going to put it on my calendar. It's all there. I mean, you know, as a museum of science, uh, we definitely put a lot of effort into having up-to-date technology, and that includes oh. our website. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah. So um, this is so, it seems to me, unusual uh, and wonderful to have in our community. Do you think that very many other communities have something like this? Well, you know, museums are really a reflection of the community, right? Okay. And of the community's yes, yes. aspirations for, you know, what, what it would be like to raise a family there mm -hmm. and, and what they really hope um, their community will represent. So there are other children's museums. There mm -hmm. are other science museums in other communities. And they're all a little bit different uh -huh. because they're all really tailored to what that community wants and needs and what's special and unique about that community. And so when when we built Moxie um, six years ago, if you can believe it, six, six years old. Six years, golly. Um, you know, but as, as we were building Moxie, it was really looking at, you know, what does our community want? And it was, you know, an emphasis on technology and engineering, kind of a like a an homage to the tech that we have, oh, yes, kind yes. of especially in that Goleta corridor. We have so much of that that's happening here and to really celebrate the innovation that happens right here in our own backyards. Yeah. Um, and also just to kind of get at that, yeah, at that playfulness that, yeah. that STEAM can evoke in, in you mm -hmm. as a learner and that creativity and that critical thinking and just all of that kind of wraps up together and I think is very um, symbolic of the Santa Barbara community. Gosh, well now don't you also um, rent your facility out for other events? We do, we oh, do. We, I... we are a very popular wedding venue, I'll oh, tell you that. Oh golly, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so um, I mean if you can imagine, because you've been on our rooftop yes, before, yes, if you yes. can imagine, you know, exchanging your vows in the, you know, Tobes Family Lookout Tower, I mean it's a pretty magical experience. Oh, so um, yeah, we're very popular for weddings, corporate parties, um, milestone birthdays, mm. um, and including even we've had some bar and bat mitzvahs as well. Uh huh. Nice. Um, but it's it's great. And then being able to host our own events there too is yeah. is really special. That is wonderful. Well, we have about a minute left. Is there anything else you'd want our audience to know about Moxie? Well, I you know just to reiterate what you said before, we really have a little something for everyone. So yes. adults can have just as much fun at Moxie as families and kids can. Um, and so I just would really encourage anybody to come by and visit if they haven't already. Yes, I would too. I would echo that. So I have many grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and I have brought them to Moxie. And you're right about that. There's something for everyone. So thank you so much for well, being with you. us today. Thank and you, thanks Cindy. for your great work in our community. Thank you. I'm fortunate to be here. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.